In this video, I give a short overview of adding a new zone in a typical circulated water heating system. This particular system is a two-zone hot water circulation system with independent circulator pumps and a propane-fired boiler. In this system, the propane boiler regulates the output water temperature and adjusts the size of the flame to account for how much heat is required. The circulators pump 105 degree water to two radiant floor headers. I'm adding a third circulator to supply hot water for heating to an adjacent building. Although there are endless variations in system designs, most fired systems will have similar components. Perhaps your system has isolation valves instead of multiple circulation pumps, or maybe you have an oil burner with a mixing valve instead of propane. Some of this may not apply to your installation. First, I tried to determine what materials I'd need for this modification. I have a two output manifold. Okay, I need a three output manifold on both the supply and return. Some black iron pipe is labeled with its size, which will help with part identification. I need another circulator and isolation valves and a return isolation valve. Three quarter inch, so one inch coupler, uh, one inch copper, and some one inch copper elbows. I don't have a lot of space here and I want this to be laid out well. So instead of cobbling on another pump at the end of the line, I'm thinking I'm going to remove the two-way manifold and replace it with the three-way manifold. It looks like the original installer didn't leave any space here for expansion, so I was going to have to move this return line anyway. Tools. Outside the typical tools like screwdrivers, ratchet set, and wrenches, plumbing has a small set of tools that are pretty much required to do this type of work. I'll talk more about them when I get to them. I started by isolating the part of the system I needed to modify. This is easily accomplished by closing the isolation valves in the system. 90 degree turn ball valves are very common. The handle in line with the pipe is open and the handle perpendicular to the pipe is closed. For this modification, I isolated all the ports to the heat exchanger because there's no way to isolate the headers directly from the heat exchanger. I used a large monkey wrench and a large pipe wrench to remove the manifolds from the heat exchanger and to disassemble the parts that would be reused in the new system. This monkey wrench is pretty big. I think the opening is up to four inches and the pipe wrench has an opening about up to three inches. So these are pretty big tools. It's not something that you're gonna have laying around, but you do need these larger wrenches in order to disassemble and reassemble the system. I was able to get most of the parts at my local big box store. Black iron pipe things are pretty standard. You also need Teflon tape, or PTFE tape and or pipe dope. You can use uh, one or the other or both and I, in the, uh, and I use both because uh, I think the chances of forming a good seal are better and in my opinion that's, that's, worth, uh, that's worth the effort. The tapered fittings on the black iron pipe get tighter the deeper you screw them on. Typically you tighten these NPT fittings two or three turns after hand tight assembly but having a background in automotive hardware and torquing, it feels like this is very tight, like about to break something tight. Uh, so with at least three wraps of Teflon tape and pipe dope, I found that a watertight seal will be made in about one full turn. So uh, you'll, you'll be okay if you don't do three full turns. I wasn't able to get a matching circulator in valves locally, so I ordered them from Supply House. So Black House gets an A rating for me for having a nice website and lots of information, easy search features, reasonable prices, and free shipping on orders over $100. The parts I needed came in two days. It sounds like a commercial, uh, but I'm not endorsed by Supply House. They're just one of those companies that have to act together and I really appreciate it. For working with PEX, you'll need at the very least a PEX cutter and a PEX ring crimper. For sweating or soldering copper, You'll need a blowtorch, uh, propane is fine, uh, solder, and soldering flux. I also use cleaning brushes. Uh, you can use sandpaper as well or Scotch-Brite, and an asbestos pad to prevent heat damage. For electronics, I have a two-zone taco controller, and it's labeled SR502. You know, I was thinking, hmm, if I was a thoughtful manufacturer, I would name my three-zone controller SR503. And it would look exactly like this one, but it would support three zones. Well, kudos to Tacos because that's exactly what they did. 
I found that controller. It was called SR503. It was exactly what I wanted. Uh, had the same form factor. Uh, so I just took out the old uh, controller, put the new control in the exact same place, wired it up, and it gave me uh, a couple more connections in order to support one more circulator and one extra thermostat. Control wires go on the top, and the power wires come out the bottom. Swapping the electronics from the two to three zone is very easy, and it took less than an hour to accomplish. I'd like to take a minute to go over the cost of this modification. You can see here that the big costs are the new controller and pump, followed by the copper pipe, manifolds, wire, and valves. On top of this, I spent another $93 in clamps, fittings, adapters, Teflon tape, and pipe dope for a grand total of $578. Well, that just about sums it up. See you next time.